and welcome back to uh, PBA at Noon. I'm Paul Benwell, and I'm joined by my associate, Sophie Caesar. Today, we have with us a company called Avicor. It's a health company. Uh, Avicor Health is a pharmacy service innovator focused on acquiring uh, and developing early stage technologies aimed at moving the pharmacy uh, network forward. Through its flagship offering, Health Tab, a wholly owned subsidiary, its mission is to make actionable health information more accessible to everyone by creating the world's largest network of rapid testing devices in community pharmacies. They are listed on the Venture Exchange under the symbol AVCR. And with us today is the CEO, Hector Bremner. Hector, whenever you're ready, please go ahead and we'll have some questions for you at the end. Thanks. Thanks so much, Paul, and appreciate everybody. Uh, listening in and uh, hoping to uh, communicate a little bit about what we're doing and the excitement uh, around us. And we've got uh, an exciting story. Uh, we're in the midst of a sort of pivotal moment for the company. We're really excited that uh, despite uh, the, the world trying to uh, put up a lot of barriers uh, for to business as usual, uh, Avercor Health and Health Tab has been excelling during this time. So we're really excited. And uh, I'm going to share my screen here and show you a little bit about what we're doing. So uh, Health Tab is our uh, flagship product at Avercor Health. Uh, Avercor Health has a, a keystone mission to address a uh, very prominent uh, and uh, key issue in the health tech space and, and also certainly in the primary healthcare delivery space. And that is bringing technologies and modernizing the pharmacy practice. And so our vision is to create the world's largest rapid testing network in community pharmacies and to make actionable health insights more accessible to everyone. Uh, the pharmacy services sector is served in a variety of different ways. For those that have been following it, you've seen pharmacy shifting away from uh, its traditional business over the last several decades of filling prescription bottles and being a more transactional type of healthcare. Uh, whereas now, uh, due to a variety of shifts in uh, policy, economics, consumer demand, uh, technology, uh, there is a push for them to get into more services. And in order to do those services, they're going to need new tools in order to do it. So we provide everything from equipment leasing, uh, consumables in the form of tests, uh, a digital product that uh, is health data focused and uh, providing a platform for decentralized clinical trials. A lot can happen with just a little uh, blood sample and uh, this is uh, making uh, diagnostics and evidence-based care more accessible to the masses. Many of us don't have a family uh, doctor anymore or the process of going out and getting blood work done uh, and getting early detection and diagnostics testing doesn't fit with our day-to-day -day lives. So many people's first interaction with healthcare is an ambulance or an emergency room and we need to change that. So there are 110,000 pharmacy locations throughout uh, the U.S. and Canada and the United Kingdom, some key markets for us. Uh, there's a $51 billion market today uh, coming up here uh, by 2025 for the point of care testing market. Uh, that number is changing rapidly and growing fast. When we were talking about these numbers last year, we were just updating this presentation. By 2025, that number was supposed to be about $35 billion. So now you've seen that go from 35 billion to 51, and the current projection for 2028 is 81 billion dollars. So this is a high growth area, and one of the key areas of growth is uh, glu glucose and uh, overall diabetes testing. Uh, and that leads us to our next number here: 102 million people uh, in North America by 2030 uh, that are going to be living with uh, diabetes or pre-diabetes. The statistic in Canada is about uh, one in three to one in four people. We've hit several milestones as of late, and we've had, uh, again, as I start off my comments by noting that 2020 and 2021 uh, have been challenging years to do business. However, uh, we've excelled, we've persevered, and uh, we've had, we had uh, overall a great year last year. And uh, this year, we've been able to accomplish a great deal, including a uh, keystone partnership with Abbott and also Shoppers Drug Mart. A little bit about Abbott and why this uh, partnership is so significant is that we are the first 
health data company and health technology company as a, as a third party supplier that has been able to partner with them and bring their high quality diagnostics machines that are not found in pharmacy typically and network them and bring them into community pharmacy. Typically what you're gonna find in pharmacy or a handheld device or purpose built uh, point of care devices, these devices are typically not accurate or, or you know, all that accurate um, and typically have um, trained pharmacists to be a little bit skeptical of them. However, the instruments that we have been able to sign distribution agreements on, specifically the Abbott Affinia 2 and the ID Now, are uh, devices that you would normally find in a hospital setting or you would find it uh, in certain medical settings. These are widely adopted devices that have been used in clinical trials and they are essentially lab quality devices. They just do one test at a time instead of the big giant machines that would be in a laboratory that do many, many tests at a time. So this agreement uh, is a landmark agreement very significant. It's not been done before and we're really disrupting how instruments are deployed in uh, this new and exciting sector of community pharmacy. And we were very fortunate, speaking of community pharmacy, to uh, partner with the largest uh, pharmacy group in Canada, Shoppers Drug Mart. Um, we uh, right now are rolling out a uh, diabetes testing program featuring the Affinion 2. We're very excited that, and some of you may have seen the press release uh, from us last week, where beta testing was just tremendously successful. We uh, typically uh, would assume that a patient would be doing, uh, or, or a pharmacy would be doing about one to two patients a day in pharmacy. Um, right now they're doing 10 to 12, as many as 15 a day. So uh, they've, uh, they've really uh, blown the doors off. Uh, we've had uh, 90 patients tested in the first seven days. Um, uh, over the last seven days, um, it's been about another 80, 85 patients. Uh, so this is a tremendous amount of testing and it's uh, fantastic for us, it's fantastic for patients, and it's really demonstrating the future of pharmacy can be about uh, diagnostics coupled with consultation with the pharmacist is the new way of engaging uh, in day-to-day -day healthcare. So we're really excited about this. Oh, sorry, let me close there for a second, sorry. Uh, so we, uh, just a, a quick uh, overview as to what Health Tab uh, looks like. Uh, this schematic here kind of gives you an idea of, of what the product actually is. So um, patient consent and a questionnaire is conducted when a patient uh, creates their account and they can do this online or they can do this in store at a kiosk that's, that's in the store. And the lab accurate testing device is located on site. This information is merged and uh, calculations are uh, used to filter the biometric information of the patient along with the diagnostics information to produce personalized reports. And so that is the power of Health Tab is that it, it's able to uh, greatly reduce the amount of administration time, uh, extract the result directly out of the machine, uh, merge information, do the complex calculations in order to properly interpret, it, interpret the data, and then produce it in an easy to read format that the uh, patient and uh, the professional can interpret quickly and understand the results and use that to guide their care plan. There is on the bottom right hand corner, you'll see de-identified real time data. And this is another really uh, fantastic attribute of Health Tab and how it opens up some tremendous doors is that researchers, drug makers, uh, government themselves, uh, and NGOs are able to use our platform to conduct studies and research in real time, in real world settings in community pharmacy. This is typically done on an ad hoc basis today. It's highly desired. It's about a $70 billion industry overall for clinical trials. And it's been largely due to the lack of infrastructure and the type uh, and costing of that type of testing that's been available to them in pharmacy. However, Health Tab is the breakthrough. We've simplified it, we've made it easy, and we've made it affordable. Some of the instruments that uh, we uh, are either currently using or looking at using uh, from Abbott, um, as we all know, the Affinion 2 is what we're deploying at the moment. The first deployments have gone exceptionally well. This tests for A1C lipid profile and C-reactive protein. And so this is a critical testing that will uh, guide the uh, early detection, screening and management of people with diabetes, pre-diabetes, and certain cardiovascular disease. 
yesterday we announced the very exciting development around ID Now. So we are the first company uh, on a third party basis to interface with the ID Now, and we are now able to offer real time results of a molecular test for infectious disease in pharmacy. This includes COVID 19. Uh, and later this summer, uh, it's up for approvals uh, as we speak, we're uh, really looking forward to, to seeing this approved, is a single panel that will be able to screen for COVID or influenza. This will revolutionize flu season in pharmacy because not only can you go into uh, pharmacy and get your flu shot or you know get a medication if you're feeling a little bit fluish or want to prevent the flu, but you can also, if you're going to travel or for work or um, or in Sophie's case, uh, we were talking about how uh, uh, her uh, kids uh, were getting into camp and, and needed tests, you'll be able to get a lab accurate test in real time in a cost effective way in a community pharmacy and it's really going to make uh, people um, more comfortable in the spaces that they're in. Uh, it's going to really reduce the amount of uh, administrative lag time and uh, get us away from some of the less accurate testing that's out there. And in the middle is a test that we are looking at uh, very closely. We, there's a lot of demand for uh, liver and kidney testing, and we're going to be looking at the iStat Alinity, which is a product uh, offered by Abbott. And so um, this gives you an idea of uh, some of the ways that we intend to continue to expand the instrument and test offering uh, that we're, we're bringing to pharmacy. So I talked about the interface and what it looks like, and you can get up to 23 biomarkers in an easy to read format. You can access it very quickly, you can access it online. Um, our system is also built as that schematic um, sort of alluded to, but to not put a too fine a point on it, is we're built on an open API platform. And what that essentially means is that our software can connect to other softwares. So uh, there's a lot of really exciting health tech products out there that are um, health data focused. Uh, they're, they're either B2C or B2B. Uh, maybe they're about driving learning from information like real uh, world evaluation softwares, or maybe they're just health data management and coaching softwares. We can power those with real world results and direct diagnostics right there from pharmacy. And it's uh, communicated very quick, very easy. Uh, but of course, you can also use the platform itself. And uh, it has a really fantastic interface and uh, people really like it. So what does this all mean? It means that we're empowering patients along a healthier path where they can now improve what they are measuring. Uh, tons of evidence out there to support that patients generally feel disengaged, but when they are engaged and they feel uh, a sense of direct agency in their health, they will take the actions to avoid the complications from acquired illness. Let's remember uh, that the number one killers of folks today are largely acquired diseases, not strictly genetic. So um, we take actions to get ourselves to the point when we acquire diabetes. Doesn't matter if you have a genetic predisposition to it or not. Um, lack of exercise, diet, certain medications, it gets us there. Cardiovascular disease, kidney disease, all of these are great examples of it. So uh, while pharmacogenetics, which is um, extremely popular and you know a good example of that would be like 23andMe or uh, a whole host of uh, really smart companies doing genomics related to health and, and efficiencies and, and uh, efficacy improvements through genetics. It's important to remember that that's telling you the odds of illness. illness. What Health Tab is doing is telling you the actual score of the game. So a person can go into their pharmacy, get tested, know where they're at, be engaged with this data, and improve their cholesterol levels and, and, and make better medication choices along with their uh, pharmacist and get guided to a healthier outcome. And when we talk about infectious disease, think of uh, how a critical it is. If we thought that our child was sick or we thought that our loved one was sick, um, or that we needed to travel and we just want the convenience of it. Um, if we can walk into our pharmacy, we can take a test and in 15 minutes we have a result and we have uh, something we can show someone and we can communicate this information. And then also imagine if government was able to 
uh, and health ministries were able to receive this information and get flagged when infections start to pop up. It will revolutionize the future of how we respond to infectious disease outbreaks. And it doesn't matter if it's just, you know, SARS like uh, viruses like COVID. Maybe we've had intense uh, influenza seasons. Sometimes you have streptococcus, uh, streptococcal infections out there. Those can be extremely deadly. However, it's often not until you see people showing up in hospital or morgues that we really end up with an understanding as to where that virus is or how it's moving. Now, again, imagine testing in community pharmacy ahead of the curve, real-time data reporting and direct action being taken and resources being put into those communities and advisories and warnings being done to prevent spread. This is how we avoid another COVID-19 2020 shutdown and uh, the impacts that I'm sure all of us uh, have felt. And this is uh, my last point there is, and in, I in, in want to drill down on this just a little bit further, is improving access to real world data. Uh, the FDA, the CE uh, have both uh, prior to COVID had mandated that uh, real world data be uh, featured more uh, prevalently within the uh, clinical trials and the overall market studies being done for drug approvals and regulatory monitoring. The reason for that being is, and vaccines a great example, is that we have clinical trials and then we move the, the, the product out into the environment and then we discover complications, not until you release it into a more broader level of product, um, uh, the public. And the reason being is clinical trials are inherently narrow. They're also really expensive. It's, it takes about 2.6 billion US CapEx to get a drug approved. And it also takes a close to 10 years to get it done. So regulators like the FDA and the CE have said, if we can use real world data, and if we can use more point of care testing, and we can use settings like the community pharmacy, we can get that time shrunk down, get that cost shrunk down. And what that means is lower cost drugs of um, uh, to treat disease of concern, and uh, we can save lives quicker. So we feel that we're going to be uh, a real critical link in, in this. So better patient ace and insights and a new way of operating decentralized clinical trials in pharmacy. And uh, we've been getting fantastic feedback. So um, whether it's from Shoppers Drug Mart or Abbott Rapid Diagnostics uh, or the pharmacists using us on site, uh, these are just some comments from recently, but um, it, it's not a, uh, a, any stretch to say that what we're doing is extremely disruptive and revolutionary in the pharmacy practice. Um, there has been a lot of uh, trials and, and false starts in this area. A lot of things uh, pioneered that came close to working but weren't quite ready. Um, a lot of interesting elements of what we do, but they're in silos and they don't work together. And what's really unique about what we're doing is that we bring all of these pieces in a 360 way in a one solution where all the players can uh, engage in this product. They can use it for their purposes, drive better outcomes and do it at a lower cost. Uh, so, uh, sorry, this thing keeps on lagging on me. So uh, just quickly here, um, timescales of course have been challenged due to uh, COVID impacts on the pharmacy, a lot of vaccine rollout, but um, the long story short of some of these schematics here, or some of these, these charts is just to say that um, health tab is an extremely profitable opportunity. Uh, we make revenues in a few different ways. Uh, again, uh, we uh, are able to uh, lease the, the machine along with the, uh, provide a, a software licensing fee and a, and a single monthly payment for the pharmacy in order to have the technology on site. That includes the analyzer and the software. They also purchase from us the consumables, so the actual individual tests uh, we're able to generate a margin from that. And then uh, we're also able to generate uh, revenue from uh, decentralized clinical trials, like I just described, where um, sponsors, as they're called, uh, paid to be on the network. And in the long run, as we build uh, a pool of metadata, which would be de-identified, it, it doesn't have a personal identify, uh, identifiable information in it, but um, has very valuable statistical information, we feel that data will be uh, marketable as well. Uh, however, we, uh, we keep our costs, our overhead down. Um, we're really not, uh, the system is built and, and future improvements and expansion costs are um, managed in such a way that we have a, a low cost to, a low capital cost to expand. And as we grow, uh, we become more profitable. 
And so we project um, while the scales uh, here, these numbers are all actually uh, quite conservative. Um, as I said before, a lot of this modeling is done off of uh, the assumption of one patient a day. Right now we are seeing with the opinion two in our diabetes program, we're doing 10 to 15 a day. Even if we're averaging five a day, um, our numbers, uh, and we're just in the process of sort of reevaluating uh, a lot of these numbers uh, in light of the new information that we're getting over this week and next week. But um, all I can say is it's very exciting. Our business model is, is, is proven. Uh, it was already very healthy, um, and it's just gotten a lot healthier. So we're really excited about it. Cap table, just quickly, uh, you can pull this off our website and you can, you can find this, but um, you know, we have, uh, I think, uh, uh, we have a mature model in the sense that Avercore Health was um, created out of a cross-licensed generic drug company many, uh, about 2017, 2018 is when they decided to make the transition. And so uh, over uh, my time with the company, we've had some exciting growth. Uh, last year, um, really, we're able to um, put a new shareholder base underneath this is extremely loyal and we're really grateful to you and and uh, we're uh, there's a lot of excitement and enthusiasm for us uh, we've had a very strong year this year we uh, raised quite a bit of money uh, we were able to raise uh, over three million dollars in um, in equity in two placements uh, and then we also have had uh, um, and expect to have our warrants continue to be um, exercised so um, and, and as well as options so our funding uh, for the near near term um, there is a, 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 if things continue to go the way that they're going and we have to grow uh, to the level that we need to grow, we may need to do um, more capital outreach. However, we do feel that we have enough in options and warrants being exercised that, uh, and, and given kind of where we're at in the market. So we think we're going to do really well there and uh, have the resources that we need uh, and we're currently uh, funded. Uh, we have a fantastic team. And uh, again, you can go to our avacorehealth.com. Um, evercorehealth.com uh, to uh, learn a bit about us. Um, but we've got uh, a small but very focused and very dedicated team. And um, you know, I think uh, our results over the last year and a bit have uh, shown uh, just that. So uh, if you uh, want to get a hold of us, uh, my phone number is there, 604-773-8943, or you can uh, email us at investor at avercorehealth.com. Awesome, thank you, Hector. Um, that was a great presentation. And yes, to your point, I would have loved to use your services last week. We had had that discussion about how it'd be great just to get results immediately, especially for things, you know, nowadays, like we were discussing where a common cold could be mistaken for COVID or vice versa. Um, That's right. Yeah. So um, speaking about uh, shoppers, are you guys exclusive to shoppers or is this something that could potentially be rolled out into other pharmacies? Not exclusive, no. And we definitely have a great deal of interest from other, <clears throat> excuse me, other pharmacy groups. Um, so we do expect other major brands to um, quote unquote fast follow. Um, and we uh, are really proud to have shoppers uh, aligned with us on this. Uh, they truly are uh, look to as leaders. I, I think that the way that the pharmacy sector uh, makes decisions to kind of look at, at what shoppers doing and, and um, you know, they have a lot of respect for their, uh, what they're doing. And so if they see the innovations that they're making uh, working, they definitely, we expect to have a lot of adoption. We also are um, uh, engaged in conversations in the United States and expect to expand there. And we also uh, expect to uh, have projects in the UK and EU in the, in the not too distant future. Um, of course, you know, if you try to forecast anything, put dates and times to anything in 2020, 2021, uh, you'll be made a fool of. So, you know, we, and I've done that a few times a year, but, you know, you go in and you, you set a target and you have no choice but to try. Um, but we we're making a great uh, headway. And I feel like, you know, we're rounding a corner as bumpy as it is right now. Uh, but uh, in, in like globally speaking, uh, the company is doing great. But I mean, you know, yeah. with Delta variants and you know vaccines starting to take root, there's still obviously a lot of people that are um, getting sick, which is unfortunate. But all that said, um, we anticipate a very strong closeout. Uh, a lot of exciting developments over the fall in heading into 2022 and 2022, 2023, and beyond, uh, being some pretty exponential growth for us. 
That's great. Yeah, I know it's impossible to predict. I mean, we wouldn't, have, you know, two years ago, we wouldn't have predicted this. So no, uh, but that's great. Because one of the questions was, do you plan on just staying in Canada? So there, there, there's the plan to, you know, expand uh, the US, UK and, uh, and the EU. That's great. Um, now, you know, talking, I mean, now we'll, we'll just be discussing with Canada, but do, does the government, do the government healthcare plans and private insurance place pay for these tests that are performed um, or is it on the consumer or the client themselves? Yeah, that's a really great question. You know, one of the really powerful attributes of health tab is that it doesn't require uh, and the way that the business model is built is not, not as beholden to public funding and, and certainly um, getting adopted from, from the public side. Uh, and this is also really important when you consider the NHS and, and many of the um, public healthcare uh, entities in, in Europe. Um, we have this flexibility within our model because of the sponsorship side of things, because the, the program can be sponsored by uh, either private health insurers that want to monitor their treated populations or um, uh, product manufacturers like drug makers that are looking to engage in patient acquisition or therapy monitoring and, and adherence monitor, monitoring. Um, so those are really unique attributes. But it's also the system is set up and what's, you know, a real breakthrough is that we keep the the monthly cost of being able to operate health tab for the pharmacy so low that for most of the blood tests, um, they can they can absorb the cost because there's other ways in which they make revenue uh, rather than just trying to you know put a 20 cent or 20 percent um, or whatever margin on the test cost. We generally encourage them to say one person with a diabetes for your pharmacy is worth about sixteen thousand dollars a year in annual revenues. So if you, you know, back of the napkin math in our beta store, if you've gone ahead and screened 90 people, statistically 30 of those people are gonna be people with diabetes or pre-diabetes. So that is a pretty massive revenue win and patient acquisition wow. win if you can retain those patients. Um, our other uh, markers here are, and, and we've been operating in, in um, stores for uh, a little while now, there's about nine or, or 10 different ways that pharmacies increase their blended margin uh, by focusing on services and using health tab. Uh, but we, we're very confident that um, the test cost can be free for the patient or lower no cost to the patient. And you know, we talk about the virus, uh, we think that maybe there's a private pay model for that. Um, and you know, we're just in the process right now of, of kind of putting those things together and um, seeing what pharmacy uh, does. But I can tell you that you know, uh, we're able to offer it at a cost that uh, is gonna make sense. It's gonna be very competitive and you know, a major competitive advantage over, if you're gonna do a PCR test today, it's gonna take you 72 hours to get the results. Uh, the result sometimes has to be, uh, the sample has to be flown to as far as way as California is what's, what's been happening in places like Ontario. So um, it can happen right there you get the results in 15 minutes and you have a molecular test um, for about the, what you're getting charged for rapid antigen, which is, um, you know, far less um, important marker. So, you know, and, and, and this also uh, speaks to influenza and, and other, um, you know, key viruses of, of concern. So long story short, we encourage that the test be free to the patient because we think that lower volume on the network doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense for the healthcare provider and doesn't make sense for a, a lot of different reasons. But um, it's low low cost. Uh, there are other reimbursements through the public system, like some of the consultations and, and some of the other screening work is actually funded either by private insurance or by public insurance. And so uh, there, there's very robust revenue opportunities for the pharmacy. Okay, excellent. Um, and so you mentioned, um, what a, who would be your competition? Like, is, is there a competition out there doing this? Or, you know, do you guys have a good foothold in the market right now? Yeah, there's no direct competition to us in, in this regard. And uh, we're, we're fortunate in that way, but we think it's also, um, we often equate it in, in the example sometimes I use is, uh, um, you know, MySpace and Facebook, you know, MySpace and Facebook were, were like, if you, if those who remember MySpace, I didn't have a page, but I remember people, this was the thing in, in sort of the earlier 2000s and, and sort of the 2010 time, 2011 time. And uh, people had these pages and, you know, it was sort of static and it was clumsy and it was isolated and it didn't look like particularly cool, kind of looked, you know, childish and didn't, and then along comes Facebook and makes the user experience better. Uh, bring some pieces together that made uh, the flow make more sense. And so 
uh, almost overnight, uh, they were able to, to usurp that market space. And so we feel that this uh, in the diagnostic space is sort of the same way. There's either been the, um, the approach to go after pharmacy uh, instrument only, which we feel it doesn't work for the pharmacies because instrumental, the, the pharmacies aren't interested and the pharmacy networks aren't interested in having um, the stores operating in isolation. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is a, a, too much onus on the pharmacist to, to market it, promote it. And then they feel that um, because they have to do all the capital expenditure of that device up front, that it doesn't, doesn't work. And then on the flip side, there's softwares that are either um, strictly um, business to consumer or B2B, uh, but they, they're not really holistic. And so uh, we think that you don't need to invent a new analyzer. Uh, you should work with the, the, the folks who make the best ones and we're proud to work with Abbott. Um, you should um, take uh, technologies that you know that are work, that are approved, that are reliable and robust, and you package them together and you create this new value added uh, opportunity. And that's how we uh, feel that we are the uh, most successful uh, approach in the market space and why we're having the success that we're having. And we are totally unique. Okay, excellent. Um, do you, you mentioned Abbott, do you buy or do you rent these devices from Abbott? We buy them. And okay. so part of our business model is to um, package it in um, a service agreement with the individual pharmacy and the pharmacy pays for a, a monthly payment that includes uh, a portion for us to be repaid for the instrument uh, and a software licensing fee. Uh, of course, over time, depending on how much volume is done on, on that, um, uh, pretty quickly um, the instrument can and CapEx is repaid uh, uh, on the instrument um, if the, the volume is done there. So um, we have a, a very a robust model. Uh, we're generating a very strong income. And I would, I would kind of close on this thought on, on this. Is, um, and there was one more question I can answer, but um, a one test a day with the instrument and the tests, one test a day, we would be generating about 1100 bucks a month per store. Okay. But we're doing 10 to 15 a day. So you can see that um, you know our assumptions, uh, while conservative uh, and responsible, um, turns out that uh, the demand is extremely high and and well above uh, our our uh, expectations. And so uh, we're really excited to see that. And um, and so to and to also answer this this other question here from um, Kevin, he says, uh, how hard is it to integrate data in and in info between doctors, practices, and pharmacies? With Health Tab, it's very easy. Uh, the only real challenge is that, um, you know, it's, it's a time where the industry is learning that it needs to innovate and change. So they're not typically used to having these data connections and these integrations. And so their IT people get a little bit, um, you know, freaked out by it because, you know, they're not really sure what to do. So we're, we're that, that's the only real uh, <laughs> challenge that we ever have to uh, uh, contend with is kind of educating uh, folks on that side. However, um, it, it, the horse has left the barn. This is happening. You have, if you look at Loblaws, uh, which bought Shoppers Drug Mart, it's invested in Maple, which is a, a really powerful telemedicine tool. Uh, they invested in League, which is a really powerful uh, app-based program, which uh, uh, encourages um, uh, health coaching and, and health information and, and manages uh, a patient's individual health data. You can now see how ecosystems are being built and how all these things have to be connected in order to create a seamless patient experience. And so that's what we're there to facilitate, that um, a, a telemedicine doctor can, draw, uh, can, can recommend that a patient goes and gets tested in pharmacy. That information in real time is shared with the pharmacist and the physician and the patient, uh, and can even be shared with uh, research entities that are also uh, subsidizing the cost. And so this is a, extremely powerful. As, um, if we learned anything from the pandemic, we've learned a lot from the pandemic, but if there's one thing that we've learned from the pandemic, even though we're getting kind of towards the end of it, is we still don't have the health data tools where information is shared in a timely fashion. And so uh, if we were to avoid a future pandemic or if we were to avoid the serious complications of healthcare outcomes, we need to make sure that this infrastructure is built and we need to do it now. It's pretty clear that the bureaucracy is not gonna do it. So what it's, this is a really tremendous opportunity for the private sector to get behind Health Tab, say we can build a global network of pharmacies that you're gonna watch uh, and report in real time, provide a life-saving tool 
in, in between these moments of crisis. But when there is a crisis, this system can be activated to uh, effectively monitor uh, and, and react in real time to infectious disease outbreaks. Wow. Um, Paul, I think you had a question or two as well for Hector. Just a couple. Can, uh, Hector, can you give us a quick breakdown on shareholder? Uh, who are your shareholders, major shareholders? Do you have any uh, big investors? Well, I'd love to say that, uh, you know, we had big institutional folks and, uh, you know, I had some big names throwing around, but we're a very uh, democratic uh, organization. Uh, we are truly the company of the people. So we're, our, our base is largely, um, you know, folks that have uh, latched onto us over the last uh, year and a bit. And, um, you know, it's a pretty broad base. So, you know, we don't have any big names behind us as of yet. Um, you know, maybe they're watching, maybe they're listening, maybe more people want to, to back a, a strong Canadian uh, innovator. But this is one of the challenges is being a Canadian innovator. And, you know, for those that know me, know my background in politics and government and, you know, yeah. my time as the assistant to the Minister of International Trade for British Columbia. This has been a long, long uh, uh, battle for Canadian innovators. Um, we, we sometimes get overlooked. Um, you know, if you had an address in, in um, you know, California or Texas, you know, maybe you get looked at a little bit differently. But what we're asking people is to look beyond the address and remember that Canada has a fantastic track record of innovation. Um, there's obviously a, a, an investment premium in investing in Canada, particularly if you're a U.S. investor. And uh, there's nothing that's stopping us from going global. There's nothing stopping us from scaling. Um, we will scale nationally uh, here in Canada. We're moving fast and we're really excited about uh, what we're doing. And so we're hoping that uh, people will, will see what we see and uh, get behind us. Okay, just two quick questions and then we can wrap this up. Uh, your data accumulation, you're talking about doing trials with uh, doing it on the pharmacy level, but also you, I'm assuming that you would bring in pharmacists. How, how are you going to monetize uh, your data that you have? Okay, yeah, so there's a, a couple uh, different ways that we uh, do this is um, a we can do it on a customized project basis. So let's pretend you're a major drug maker or uh, actually a really good example is something that we actually have done. Um, the province of British Columbia and the Kidney Foundation of Canada used HealthTab to screen for uh, kidney disease, chronic kidney disease in patients in British Columbia. And a paper was published on it uh, last summer. So in that particular case, it's a, what you would kind of call a decentralized clinical trial. So there is, um, there's a bunch of different ways that can be funded, but you know, let's pick a simple way is that it's a per patient uh, test cost. So they say, well, we want to test 3,000 people, people, and we want to do it over a set period of time, and we're going to, uh, you know, encourage you to get out there and 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 test those people in pharmacy. So that's one way we can do it. Another way we can do it is sort of an ongoing. Uh, if you're a, a drug maker, um, and there are some drugs from Bayer, for example, that are really particular around kidney function uh, and heart function in order to get the, uh, the efficacy of the drug right. So every time that person comes in and gets tested. Um, that person needs to, or rather, every time that person comes in and picks up their prescription, they should be tested and, in, and their biomarkers should be matched up against what their current prescription level is and that dosage should be modified. So that's another way that a drug maker can have an ongoing program to pay to make sure that their patients are more effectively served. Then there's like patient acquisition, therapy adherence monitoring, clinical trials. There's, there's companies called um, clinical research organizations. These are multi-billion dollar international companies that test people all over the world. And they run the clinical trials for drug makers and their job is to study people. And we're engaged in those conversations and they're really excited about having a pharmacy network that can do the type of uh, engagement with patients at that level. And then the final way is, um, if you can imagine all the data over time that's being built up within our system, that as well can be purchased by those same organizations. Because they have softwares that they call sort of Re, um, AIs or whatever, you know, to use the buzzwords, but they, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty smart softwares and they're predictive softwares and you just keep dumping data into them. And what they do is they, they learn from that information and then they sort of analyze that information and then they start producing results. It's a key part of the way uh, research is conducted today. And we think in the long run, Avercore is going to be a, a tremendous um, contributor to that, that critical data pool that's going to make medicines um, cheaper more effective and uh, get to people quicker.
Okay, perfect. Now, just one last quick question. Uh, mm. The equipment that you buy from Abbott, uh, obviously over time, there'd be upgrades or updates to technology. Is mm -hmm. that done electronically through their software or is this yeah. a physical change of equipment? No, no, they're, they're, they can, um, it depends on the device and how they're, they're updated. Some of them have to be updated with like a USB key. So it just gets sent to the location and it kind of just does it. Or some of them, it can be done over the airwaves. Um, our system um, is fully encrypted and we've taken great pains to reduce any feasibility of intrusions during those. It's kind of considered a vulnerability point is when you know, you're yep. updating things. Uh, so we've taken great pains to make sure to work with Abbott and to work with uh, our pharmacy partners to, to develop ways that uh, it makes the, the, uh, the probability of someone uh, penetrating the system in that manner uh, virtually uh, impossible. Um, we were really proud of our system security, the encryption, the tools that we use. And, um, and so, uh, and, and, and to build on your, your point of question about as technology evolves, the reason why we're device agnostic and we don't focus on a particular analyzer is that it does change so, so often, you know, uh, uh, there's, there's a lot of really cool and exciting things happen. And we think it would have been a limiting, limiting factor to focus too much on the analyzer. Um, so we offer a range of analyzers. Um, uh, Abbott's, you know, most we believe is most committed to this space, but you know, uh, we're we're not exclusive to anybody, and, and we do offer another analyzer by a company out of California that we started with, which is the Abaxis Piccolo. And uh, so we fully anticipate to be uh, able to offer uh, a range of devices. And you know, if there's a need and there's a market, and and you know, it has a USB port, we can connect to it. Um, you know, we're, we're all about integrating it. And, and that includes in the future, things like wearables, uh, which is kind of exciting. Like we're all kind of, a lot of us are wearing eye watches. Uh, yeah, exactly. So uh, these are uh, collecting biometric information on you. And actually eye watch is conducting a really right now, uh, amazing uh, heart health study on uh, women globally. Uh, women, uh, the number one um, killer of women today is uh, heart disease uh, because they, um, A, there's, um, a, a prejudice that exists within the healthcare system. And unfortunately, when they present symptoms, it, it's sometimes yeah. not believed. They're told like, you know, it's something else. And so they're kind of sent away and that's a, a fact. And then the other fact is, is that they present very different symptoms than men. Men's heart uh, health uh, symptoms are, are much more pronounced. Um, females, it, it's, um, it's, it's, it's a little bit more of a subtle and insidious um, um, thing. So what iWatch is doing and Apple is doing with uh, American Heart Foundation and some others, some, some key universities is studying heart health uh, and using wearables. So, you know, our software can um, be used in some, in these cases to uh, continue to power wearables in the future and, and do some, some really exciting things and, and a way of engaging the patient as well, because um, the current wearable sort of software is out there. It's really just it's really just for those who are studying. It's the patient themselves doesn't really um, understand what that information is, and they don't. It doesn't really engage them in any way. Which is the whole point is to see if you're getting the health data. It's um, one thing. I uh, another thing. One of the many things I've learned in COVID and in COVID testing in particular is that buying tests or doing testing is not a strategy. Hmm. The only reason that you're testing is to get information. That information is what you're supposed to be focused on. It's not, it's not the testing. The testing is just, it's just a, a, a vehicle. The data, the information, and then how you use it to make better decisions. That's fundamentally what Health Tab is about and, and the purpose of what we're doing. It's not about testing, it's about information, and then it's about outcomes from that information. Hector, phenomenal story. I'm so happy that you I came here today. Uh, we'll have to, to be to here. back in a few months to get an update because you look like you're on a nice ramp up here and things are going well. I well really we're going to be excited to follow you and uh, and keep everybody updated because I think there's probably a lot more good news to come. Yeah, for sure. So we'll be live. Uh, the The whole diabetes project is sort of live by the end of the week, is my understanding, and so uh, it's in shoppers' hands. And so they're push and pray play on that. So if you live in in the area, or you can go to Health Tab. Uh, dot com and you can find uh, a location if you live in Ontario um, you can find a location near you you can go by the store and uh, go find out uh, how you're doing awesome Perfect. thanks again for your time thanks everybody for uh, tuning in today we took a little time off uh, early summer we're getting ramped up for 
the late summer and the early fall. So you'll be hearing from us soon. Again, thanks very much, Hector. Much appreciated. It is my pleasure. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. Take care.